declarative way of formulating your resources, interacting with your resources, interacting with your cluster is actually happening in action. Terraform does not have to replicate resources. <laughs> Hello there and thank you for joining me for today's video of 100 days of Kubernetes, the challenge where we aim to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days and me sharing a few here right on my channel. Now you can pick any video, learn about any topic or follow the entire challenge depending on you. For those who are new to me, my face, my name is Anais, I'm a developer evangelist at Codefresh, just joined the DevOps space about a few months ago after well, working for several years in the crypto space. So everything is pretty much new to me and I'm just sharing my entire learning experience on how a newbie discovers the space and discovers new topics. So you might want to check out my public Notion page, link below with all of my notes. Anyway, today we're gonna to be looking at Terraform. What is Terraform? Why would we want to use it? How do we use it? When would we want to use it? Let's get started. So what is Terraform? Terraform is an open source tool used for the provisioning of infrastructure as code, setup as code. It was originally developed by HashiCorp, something like that. Um, and uh, it's basically used for you to be able to set up your infrastructure. Now, usually we would set up infrastructure as a setup and then we would deploy application, yeah? And especially when we are living in the microservices world where we don't have one huge monolithic application, but we instead have several smaller applications. So each of those are one application. Um, we might have to set up different requirements for those different environments, or we would have to set up um, a lot of the same resources multiple times for all of our microservices. Now, we wouldn't want to duplicate our um, infrastructure requirements, our infrastructure definitions, such as YAML files or whatever we use to do set up our infrastructure, right? We also wouldn't want to manually press several different buttons, right? Like, let's, let's assume you would set up your infrastructure, like let's say your AWS uh, servers, cloud providers in the UI, right? So this is the UI. You have different buttons that you have to press and uh, submit and so on, right? And if you would do that manually, you might end up, well, not setting up the same thing or setting up uh, the same thing. Well, it would be quite error prone. Humans are really error prone and we shouldn't do manual tasks, okay? So what Terraform allows us to do is define what infrastructure we want. So here is, what do we want to have? Can you see this? Yes, you can see this. Um, what we want. And then we tell basically within a, file or multiple files we tell terraform we want this okay and then we tell it what we want now usually when you set up new infrastructure you might have to have a look at what you already have if you already have kubernetes cluster running right what is there available for you already so you don't duplicate resources right let's assume you want to have three different clusters for three different environments and you want to run XYZ monitoring services, um, I don't know, other services, um, I don't know, whatever you want to, database, whatever you want to run on those clusters for your application, depending on your needs, um, you will have to have a look, what do you have already on your cluster, right? This is, it's, I don't know, uh, your cluster. And so what Terraform does is it has a look at the original state. And then it figures out, okay, what is needed to get to the desired state, okay? This is our desired desired state, yeah? And that's, oh, you can't see it. Anyway, that's where we want to get to our desired state. So, and it will figure out, okay, we need to set up this. We need to set up this. We already have that, so we don't need to set it up. So this is check, check, and we don't need this, so we cross it out, yeah? And then Terraform basically, once you tell it to set up those resources, it will go ahead and set up the resources for you depending on your needs. Now, it will do so in a declarative format. Now, we want to, and I talked about this in previous videos already, we want to define all of our resources in a declarative format. That makes our lives easier and it allows us to further automate our processes, our tasks, our resources, and so on. Now, what that means in a 
What is a declarative format? What does that mean? What is the difference between imperative and de declarative? Well, if we press a bunch of buttons, that's imperative. We say, okay, we maybe want to have this and then that, and then we want to add this. And that's how we evolve the state, right? So we, ha we start by nothing. We start by the original state and then we are like, okay, we want this. We want to add this. We want to add that, right? And at some point we might arrive at our desired state, but it's not necessarily that we will arrive there. We might diverge along the way. It's like if you well, if you drive somewhere, right, you know you want to get to a supermarket and you take different turns and then you might be like, oh, okay, let's take that turn. Oh, but there's traffic. Let's take that turn, right? Or, oh, this street looks nice. Let's take that turn. And you might take it a different road than um, you would usually take and you might end up in a different supermarket or you might drive by a supermarket where you're like, oh, this supermarket looks nice. Let's go there instead, right? So you might end up with a different kind of infrastructure in the end. So what you do with an declarative in a declarative format you as we just mentioned you start by the desired state what do we want what and then you work your way backwards or like in this case terraform will work its way backwards and see okay what do we need to get there and then it fill in those gaps and that's how we arrive then at our desired state it's like um if you go into a taxi you tell it okay i want to go to the airport right you don't care how to get to the airport. And in that case, um, <laughs> the taxi driver will either ask you which airport, right? And you will have to specify further details, like which terminals on, but the path is already defined. Like it will make sure the taxi driver will make sure, okay, what is the best way to get there, right? In that case, um, similar if you look up in on Google a preferred path to get to a destination, right? You just provide the destination and it will figure out the path. You don't have to fill it out. You don't have to provide intermediate steps for Google to figure out that path. Okay, so when we're using Terraform, we have three different stages roughly set three different stages in which we set up all of our resources the first one is our initiation stage the second one is our plan stage and the third one is our apply stage now we will take a look at like how to set up a resource through terraform in a second in a practical manner but basically the initiation stage just makes sure you have all the requirements all of the resources you need to set up your well your resource definition your terraform file whatever it is right and then in the plan stage you make sure that um well you can have a look at what is needed to set up those resources that you want to have to arrive to the desired state and then in the apply stage you at the end apply those resources you set them up and or terraform in that case sets them up for you we will take a look at that in a second now you can use terraform first of all to manage your infrastructure so your infrastructure as a service for example by aws by google cloud and so on you can use it to set up your cloud cluster then you can also use it to manage your services um so like your yeah Service as a service? No. Anyway, you can use it to set up any service that you need for your application. You can also use it to set up any platforms that you need for your application. That would also be an option. Now, let's go ahead and have a look at, um, well, how to use Terraform in action. Okay, so like a lot of times, I tried to show something and it didn't quite work out. So I ended up going back and forth between different tutorials. So I ended up using this tutorial, this guide by Terraform, and they have really nice guides. So check those out there, link below. And this guide here by HashiCorp Learn. So here, this one is from the official Terraform site, which is also HashiCorp. I think they are both HashiCorp. So I don't know really what the, I don't know, I don't know what the, the split here is but anyway so I use this guide and then I use this guide and I kind of came up with something that works so um, I'm gonna show that to you now first I'm over well where am I whoop I'm here yeah so let's let's clear this up this mess anyway so I have here a folder called terraform we will have a in a second a look at what is within that folder itself however here I'm connected to kubectl uh, config and get context. So I have here this kind Terraform learn cluster and that is based on, well, it's based on a config file that I found in one of the tutorials that basically defines um, 
let's have a look at what it defines. So over here, this is just what it defines. Um, it's a basic YAML resource that defines a cluster and it specifies within the control plane. It specifies the container port, host port, and the address it's listening to. Now, I'm not 100% sure how that interacts with the resource that I'm going to create with Terraform, but this is basically the file that I'm used to create a kind cluster. So you just go ahead and you specify once you have that. What you basically do is you say uh, kind create and then um, well, create cluster and then you say the name and you say test for example and then you specify the file that is used the config file that it just showed that is used to create the cluster now i already did that so as you can see i'm on the kind terraform learn cluster uh, that's based on that and then i set up two files now let's go ahead and have a look at those two files here when i open them up here those are the files let's make this small so Okay, I have the terraform.tf file and the terraform.tf bars file. Um, now the tf bars file is based on um, stores configuration variables that I needed for Terraform to connect to my kind cluster. Now they are also referenced here, so it's basically those. Um, now the thing is I received several error messages because I didn't have this part, this decode part here set up. Uh, so I found that in some issues. So I'm gonna probably submit a PR and see what they think about this because the tutorial itself wasn't working. And it would be nice if tutorials work. It makes my life easier, you know? And your life easier too. <laughs> anyway, so these variables here are defined within the Terraform TF worse file that I'm not going to show you because those are sensitive values and usually you want to have like a um, secret management of sorts where you can store those values. Now in this example I didn't set that up since I mainly wanted to learn how to use Terraform. Now next we have we set up a namespace Kubernetes namespace it's gonna call it test uh, we're gonna set up Kubernetes deployment also test and that relies on engine X. Now that's defined within the spec section here. We have, we want to have a replica set of two of this application of this image of engine X. Now we should probably define like the tag. You wouldn't necessarily want to leave the tag blank and then it would choose the latest. However, that's basically the containers we're going to set up. It's going to set up a service also for engine X so we can access that target port as form of node port. Um, so it's accessible within our cluster. Anyway, so those are like basic Kubernetes resources, like you would set them up in a YAML file. However, in this case, we set it up within Terraform. So Terraform knows what kind of resources we want and Terraform is installed. So if I have Terraform, it will give me some options. So as you can see, I have Terraform installed. It's here. Um, you can easily install it from their website. Um, they provide several different installation options. Where do we have it? It's really easy to set up. So just check those out. Uh, they are also linked in a public notion page. So once we have that, once we have those resources, yeah, we obviously want to create them, right? So you do first Terraform in it to initialize everything that we need to set up our Terraform. Anyway, so then this will create those folders, those files. Now, I didn't look at what those actually are yet, so I don't think I have to interact with them on this basic use case right now. And then we can go ahead and say Terraform plan. And once you say Terraform plan, it provides us with a list of resources that it wants to set up. So in this case, it says, okay, to well, this is the desired state of our cluster here, right? We define it here within the uh, terraform.tf file. That's the desired state. And then Terraform goes ahead and is like, okay, let's have a look at your current cluster and the resources that you currently have available. Now, in this case, um, I don't have any resources available. So it says, okay, we have to add three resources. We have to add the replica set. We have to add deployment. We have to add the service. All those three resources have to be added to your cluster to fit the desired state to basically arrive from our current state to our desired state, okay? So it doesn't have to change any resources and it doesn't have to destroy any resources. It just has to add new resources. And it's gonna do this in a namespace called nginx. Now, when I go ahead now and say Terraform and then apply, 
it's gonna create those resources. Now when I hit enter, it's first gonna ask me to actually uh, confirm that that's what I want to do. So I'm gonna say, yes, that's what I want to do. And now it's gonna go ahead and create the resources that I specified within my Terraform file. Um, awesome, it created resources. So I can go ahead and see kubectl uh, get all. Now, as you can see, it's nothing in a default namespace. So you can go ahead and, well, let's clear this up first. kubectl get all in namespace engine x. And within namespace engine x, as you can see, 23 seconds ago, it created two running pods, as well as our deployment and our replica set. This is our desired state. And this is what's running right now in our cluster. Now, if I were to actually delete, let's say my deployment, let's go ahead and do that actually. Let's delete our deployment cube column. Um, delete deployment and then the engine x, engine x and namespace engine x. Okay, now I deleted the deployment, yeah? Here, no more deployment, we made it poof, okay? It's deleted. <laughs> now, once we go ahead and we say we are still in the Terraform folder with our resources, Terraform um, plan. And now it's gonna compare again the our actual state with our desired state. And as you can see, now we already have our replica set. We already have the service and the pods running. So we only need to have the deployment. We don't have to have the replica set anymore. We don't have to have the service anymore. So while well, before Terraform had to create three different new resources, now it actually only has to create one more resources. So we can say again, Terraform, oops, Terraform apply. Um, apply and then we can confirm that that's actually what we want to do. You can also, there are different parameters so you can say, okay, just approve it. I know already what I want to do. I know what's going to be created. So see, now it's just going to create the deployment and nothing else. And that's the beauty of having, um, well, you see here, right here, the um, how the declarative way of formulating your resources, interacting with your resources, interacting with your cluster is actually happening in action. Terraform does not have to replicate resources. It does not have to create new resources that are actually already running with our cluster. It can just reuse the existing resources and compare our current state with our desired state and then move them closer so they actually, they're the same, right? As it's done in this case. So we can go ahead and say again, kubectl, get all and namespace engine x and as you can see here while those others um are a bit huh, while this is while the service is already two minutes old two minutes and 30 seconds since we just since we created it the deployment is just 30 seconds old and the deployment interacts obviously with the pod so it will have a similar age and yeah those resources are running now so if you want to follow along this, what I just showed you, or you have problems with other tutorials and you want to have a look at my tutorial and the resources that I use and what I did to first interact and my first interaction with Terraform, have a look at my public notion, uh, notes, list, whatever you want to call it. I basically have a notes for every day of those 100 days. Here's day 20, today Terraform, where I basically first provide more information on what is Terraform. So if you prefer the written format, here's the written format, link below. And and then I provide further information how I set up my resources, such as my kind cluster with the YAML file, as well as how I set up my Terraform files with the specific values where you can get those values from and so on. So if you prefer the written content, maybe that's helpful for you. If it is helpful, let me know. I would love to hear from you. Now, this is it for today. I hope it was useful. If it was, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. I would highly appreciate your support. Also, if you watched this far, it must be that you're serious about learning DevOps and specifically Kubernetes. Anyway, I have a weekly DevOps newsletter, nothing sponsored, all free learning resources right to your inbox on a weekly basis. Subscribe below. Anyway, um, I hope to see you next time. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.